I think a lot of people have joined, so we can go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everyone. Good evening or good afternoon or morning, wherever you may be joining us from. Um, and welcome to the Neurathon Brain Bee panel. I'm super excited to see um, a lot of people joining us today. Um, through this sort of interactive webinar, we want to help um, students who are interested in neuroscience to learn more about the Brain Bee um, and how they can get involved and prepare, um, talk about our experiences as well, um, and answer any questions that you might have. Um, so yeah, I think we can start by introducing ourselves. Um, so my name is Beta. I'll be hosting today's session. Um, I'm currently a rising senior in high school, um, and I'm from North Carolina. Um, I'm mostly interested, well, I'm interested in all areas of neuro, but mostly um, anatomy and um, like clinical neuroscience. Um, Max, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Max Fang. I'm currently a rising senior in high school um, based in New York City. Uh, I have a pretty big interest in behavioral neuroscience and leveraging neuroscience uh, to advocate for mental health. Um, but yeah, that's about me, um, Miles. Yeah, and I'm Miles. Uh, I'm a rising junior actually in high school, and I live in SoCal, Southern California. And my interest in neuroscience, just like the rest of them, I have a uh, pretty diet, like I enjoy neuroscience as a whole, but the main thing that I uh, like to look at is neurodegenerative diseases and how to prevent those diseases. So we kind of have a pretty diverse range of interests here. So um, you guys might be asking, what even is the brain bee? So, um, well, great, we can answer that for you guys. So the Brain Bee is basically a high school uh, level neuroscience competition that has multiple sub-levels. So there's usually like a regional level, a national level, and an international level. But ultimately, the International Brain Bee is the overarching organization that the Brain Bee competitions are organized under. So overall, it's at an international tier. And the Brain Bee was kind of founded by a professor named Norbert, Dr. Norbert Mislinski, who uh, founded the Brain Bee to raise awareness for advancements in neuroscience and for neuro to like help uh, help encourage uh, encourage like interest in neuroscience among high schoolers in general. So um, beyond like you might know that the Brain Bee is a competition where people try and compete and show off that show off their like um, knowledge in neuroscience. But beyond just um, testing and all of that, there's also other uh, fun activities and events that are part of a brain bee. So you might at your local, regional or state levels or even your national levels, you're gonna get talks from professors. You get to participate in career panels re related to neuroscience. You get to participate in interactive neuroscience activities. Like I remember at my regional level, we had a cool device that allowed you to like control a robot hand using wires that like linked up to our muscles into our brain. So you'll get to really like experience different aspects of neuroscience and see if neuroscience is a good fit for you as like a possible career choice. And obviously you also get to meet a lot of really similar peers to you who have, who share your interests. And I think that's one of the most fun parts about the Brain Bee. So not only is it a competition about uh, neuroscience, but it's also a way for you to discover more about neuroscience as a whole. You can move on. And as Max said, of course, the Brain Bee is a, a great way to learn about neuroscience. Um, it does differ slightly from level from uh, chapter to chapter and between different levels. Um, at the regional level, it's mostly introductory topics um, from the Brain Facts, which is a uh, publication by the Society for Neuroscience. Um, and also some chapters will use uh, the Neuroscience Science of the Brain book, um, we'd really encourage you to check out the chapter in your local area and see um, what resources they use, what topics they cover. Um, again, it really depends on um, the chapter. Uh, brain facts, though, is, is pretty common to uh, a lot of regional levels and even at the national level as well. Um, for most chapters, um, the, the, the top, the, the winner of that um, chapter, we'll move on to the national level. Um, and at nationals, there's also additional um, topics in neuroanatomy, 
um, where you might be given a picture of a brain or even a real physical brain um, specimen and be asked to identify a certain part or identify the function of a certain part of the brain. Um, for the neurohistology section, you might be looking at uh, a slice of a brain under the microscope and have to identify a particular cell type or the function of a cell type. Um, there are also uh, like patient diagnosis sections at nationals um, where uh, there may be a patient actor who will present with a certain set of symptoms um, and you have to um, identify, you know, what the, the patient's uh, uh, disorder is. Um, and then there are also additional topics in biotechnology and biochemistry. Um, so as you can see, it's, it's a pretty wide range of topics. Um, and uh, this list of national topics is also at the international level as well. So going on into how hard the brain beat is, it might, be, it might seem like very difficult seeming for high schoolers to be talking about neuroscience or engaging in a competition related to it. But um, I was doing some digging and from the Vermont Brain Bee website, I think it explained it really well. Um, the majority of the info in the Brain Bee is like very digestible by the high school students, um, including those who have like a base knowledge of biology. So that means when you're looking into uh, the textbooks that you're um, assigned to study, such as the Brain Facts book, uh, if you have a decent knowledge of biology, you should be able to easily grasp different uh, topics, such as maybe ion channels, uh, different ions, um, different pumps, uh, uh, just different general biological processes, but more specific to neuroscience. So if you want to do well in the brain bee, um, if you want to uh, out, um, outbest your competitors or something like that, um, we, we really think that it's sort of it's sort of like studying a textbook, um, but you're also doing more than that in many instances. Uh, you're you're looking at neuroanatomy, you're looking at neurohistology. So it's not just regurgitating information from a textbook. And but when you're studying, you should be very committed to studying. But you should also be interested in the material, which is what really drives you to put the hours in and the effort in. And you really don't need to have some sort of innate or like a genius uh, within you. To do well in the brain bee because a lot of it is just about commitment and your passion for neuroscience so i like to think that if you're really interested in learning about neuroscience or psychology topics that you should that you will be committed to it and you will do well in it so yeah that's and, and i'd like to add something else to what max is saying so the very first uh textbook that you're expected to like learn from for any like brain beat competition you do is the brain facts textbook. And my personal experience and what I think other people also agree with is that the brain folks facts textbook is super easy to learn from. Like it's written in a way that's not complicated and it allows you to really like get your feet wet and like uh, begin to be become knowledgeable about neuroscience. And from there, it really just depends on your interest. For me personally, once I became interested in neuroscience and read the brain facts book, all the studying I did after that was kind of almost, it felt like I was having fun the whole time. So don't feel intimidated by the competition. Just uh, start by reading Brain Facts and see how you feel about that. So I'm going to talk about um, my local Brain Bee experience um, briefly. So um, I'm not sure how many of you people here are from New York City, but um, there's actually currently no Brain Bee in the NYC area, which is very surprising. Um, maybe there will be in the future, but I'm not sure. So I competed at the Yale Brain Bee in New Haven, um, which was hosted by uh, like Yale's Neuroscience Club or something like that. But it was a great exam. Um, so it it was it was um, all the questions were taken from Brain Facts. Uh, so the first round for me there was a uh, for formatting examples. Um, it was a group round where uh, there would be different groups, but they would pair you up into groups randomly, and you would work together to answer uh, free response questions. Uh, so it's not multiple choice um, and at the end, the team with the most points um, after all the questions have been answered would gain, like everyone in the group would gain an extra life in the next round. So the next round would be sort of a sudden death or a spelling bee style round. So the moment, so you're like lined up in a line and each person is asked a question. And when you answer a question wrong, you're immediately eliminated, which 
I'm not like in hindsight, it wasn't, I'm not sure if it was the best way to showcase everyone's abilities, but it was very, very um, high pressure in the moment, but the extra life helps. So yeah, that was my Olympic Grandy experience. So I'm gonna also talk about my regional Grandy experience and my experience was completely different from Max's. So uh, what that should tell you is that each region will have a different formatted uh, brain, uh, brain B competition and how they choose their brain B winner will be different and who moves on to national round. But uh, so you shouldn't worry about what the like format of your region's brain B is necessarily. You just need to worry about knowing stuff from the brain facts book basically. So my, uh, I competed at the Los Angeles brain B. So that's just, uh, that's actually hosted by UCLA and USC jointly. So it's pretty cool. Basically, if you're in the Southern California area, you can either choose to go to that Brain B or one that's hosted by UCI called the Irvine Brain B. And my local exam consisted of a written test, which was multiple choice and covered uh, topics from the Brain Facts. But we also actually uh, were tested on topics outside of Brain Facts during the finalist rounds. We had three finalist rounds, one for neuro, uh, one for neuroscience trivia, general neuroscience trivia, one for neuroanatomy, and one for uh, disease, disease diagnosis. So, yeah. And then to talk a bit about my experience, um, for my regional level, it was a bit similar to Max's situation, um, where I'm from North Carolina, um, and at the time, there was no regional brain bee. Um, there is one now, um, but uh, this was back in 2020. I went to the Atlanta brain bee um, that was hosted by Emory University um, in Georgia State. Um, so that was a really great experience. Um, for my exam, it was, again, also based on brain facts. Um, so you can sort of see that's basically the standard um, for all for all chapters. Um, but it was a multiple choice exam and a short answer exam um, for all the competitors. And then the top 10 would move on to the oral round. Um, it was sort of like a spelling bee where you would be asked questions and you would have to answer um, out loud. Um, and it was also elimination style. Um, Oh, yeah. Um, so here, just like a couple of photos from this year's Brain B. Um, this year, or the USA Brain He's B. He's talking about, yeah, the national Brain B, the national level. Just yeah, this is the national level that me and Miles were at. Um, so on the left side, so we had a, many different events. Like we had keynote speakers, lectures, stuff like that. Um, we were also able to visit a couple of laboratories in uh, University of California, Irvine. Um, so as you can see on the left side, I think they were like lasering dendrites. Was that right? I'm not sure if you saw it. Yeah, I think they were like- Yeah, they're cutting dendrites. They were cutting, cutting dendrites, which was cool to see. And they were testing how um, dendrites regenerate from a neuron. Um, in the middle part, we did like a little high school musical style picture um, for our scavenger hunt, uh, which was really cool. Um, we unfortunately did not win, but we got second place, me and Miles. But yeah, so that's that. It was really fun. Um, and then the third photo was, I think, uh, a part of the brain of a fly, uh, a fruit fly, Drosophila, I think, that was microscoped in. So we got to see a little dissection about that. So overall, it was a very educational experience. Um, we learned a lot about the university itself as well. Um, and yeah, it was amazing. So so yeah, the Brain Bee, like at each level, it's more than just a competition. You get to make friends and you get to learn a lot of science. Yeah, and just to add on, like my experience was back in 2021. So it was all virtual. Um, but even then, like the great opportunity to really connect with people from across the country, um, do a lot of fun, brainy things. Um, yeah, so we have a sample question. Um, you can. Yeah, so if you want to like, yeah, uh, I don't know the poll, but if you want to drop it in the chat, um, your answer, don't be afraid of getting it wrong or anything. We just want to do this for fun so you can see what the brain beat might be like. Um, but which image shows the propagation or the movement of an action potential down a neuron? So there's specific movement.
we'll give it like one or two more minutes for people to put their answer if they want. Yeah, the um the B is should be an um EEG. For a few bonus points, what does EEG stand for? <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hologram. Okay. Um, I think I'll go explain the answer here. So it's actually this one is a little bit tricky. It's actually kind of hard, but it's um the answer is C. Uh so don't don't worry if you got it wrong. It, a lot of the answers is actually a very hard question. It's very tricky. So for C, it um showcases how um an electrical signal is passed through um seen by like the negative and positive charges on the outside and the inside of the um axon um so you can see how like um how from so like the top thing the action potential and then the middle and then the bottom the action potential is traveling from left to right um so for a i'm pretty sure that that shows an action potential but it shows the membrane potential the graph of the membrane potential over time instead of the actual movement itself um, and then B is just general um, brain waves from an EEG, not necessarily um, individual action potentials, but more of like a summation of multiple ones. So yeah, that was fun. Well, I actually have a cahoot in a little bit for more questions, so. Yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, so uh, for those of you who are interested in the brain B and looking to um, study and wondering like what resources to use, um, we'd highly encourage checking out um, Simply Neuroscience's resources. Um, we have compiled um, some great uh, you know, resources that you can definitely check out at that link, um, which I can drop in the chat. Um, and then, as we mentioned before, the Brain Facts book is basically the standard for all chapters. Um, it is available for free online. Um, you can just download the PDF. Um, there's also an audiobook, um, a podcast, and um, many people have made Quizlets um, for Brain Facts and for the Brain Bee. Um, so, Quizlet is always a great resource to check out. Um, and then also various online slideshows, um, another great resource. Cool. Anything to add before Coot? Right. Yeah, and then the links are in the chat if you want to check that out. Um, okay, I'm I will start. stop sharing. Yeah, I'm going to start the Kahoot uh, within the app right now. Um, hold on. This will take me just a second. Uh, what is happening now? Um, if it doesn't, if it doesn't work, the app, I'll, I'll just like screen share it. It should be fine. Yeah, I'm just gonna screen share this. Um, hold on. Uh, I'm just gonna pull it up on my thing. Sorry for the mishap. It was working earlier, but for some reason now it's not anymore. Um, it's okay. I'm gonna screen share it now. Here, um, the game pin is uh over here. I'm just gonna close this up. If you guys, um, you can just scan the uh, QR code that's over here, or you can just follow the instructions on the screen and type in the game pin. Um, nice, we got the first one in. And I'll, I hope you guys can hear the music now. Thanks. I like how the avatar for the first one in was brain. Amazing. <laughs> Oh, I'll play it in a minute now. 
I don't think it's letting more players join right now, so I might just like. Oh, um, ugh, I think I think there's like a limit. So I'm sorry if you guys can't join, but we'll start it for right now. Uh, I'll send a link to the group later as well, so we'll get started. For those of you who are unable to play in the game, you can play along in the chat if you want, or send your answers to us. There's no prize for this, but just to see a ballpark of what questions there are. So, the first question, what is the average weight of the brain? Good job, guys. Nice, that was pretty good. Sorry for, sorry for you guys who are unable to join because of the player limit. Ugh. But you can play along in the chat if you want. Pretty good, guys. Jessica's number one right now. Awesome job, guys. A uh, prideal is great. That was a kind of tricky one. 86 billion is right. Sometimes you see it as 100 million, but 86 million is more precise. Um, yeah, nice. Let's go still in the lead. I think that's not right. That's, that's not, not right. right. I think yeah. this is not right. This EEG is correct, guys. Uh, I think I misanswered it. Sorry for you guys who didn't get the points, but if you got the right, you know you got it right. Oh, Jessica stayed in the lead. Oh, nice. Everyone got it right. Brainstem. At the USA Brain Bee, we were given real human brains and we had to identify these structures on them. So that was a little funny. It's stunk of formaldehyde in the entire room. That was fun. <laughs> yeah, it smelled though. It was like a lab thing. You would you would you you'd get like you'd have to label stuff on a piece of paper and you'd like look at the all the parts. This one's tricky. This one's really fun. Like for mine, we just got a picture, like on a computer. Yeah, virtual just can't compare. It. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Nice job. Nice for two. You guys are really good at this. No, you guys ready. know your stuff. Oh you guys God. know your stuff. Maybe you guys are ready to take it already. Jessica's still in the lead. This one's a little tricky <laughs> that I threw in. I 
I'm so a little surprised you guys know that. Um, I'm not sure if it's if Pons is right. It might be partially right. But um, super chiasmatic nucleus is like the central point for circadian rhythms. Last question. This is going to be right. Motor control. Here's the podium. Number two for Nyla, Ayana for Silver, and you guys actually really know your stuff. You guys really, really know your stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed. I think you guys are ready for it. Okay. Um. Beta, reshare, guys. Beta, do you want to share again? Yes. Um, All right, we're going to open up open up to a Q&A now. So if you guys have any questions about the Brain Bee or our Brain Bee experiences, please leave them in the chat and we'll try to get to all of them. So there's a question in the chat. Um, are gap years eligible? Um, I'm not you, entirely sure, uh, but I'm pretty, I'm, I think that the Brain Bee is only open to current high school students. Um, I'm not sure if gap year would be an exception, but I think you have to be enrolled in high school um, to compete. Yeah, I think it was ages okay. 13 to 18 at max. So you yeah. typically have to be enrolled in high school. There were a couple of eighth graders at our thing, Miles. Though. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they might be willing to make exceptions at your regional level. So find your regional competition and ask about it. Yeah, I think it, the minimum is 13 though. Um, There's no question. Yeah, is like I did, a, I did oh. the regional brain when I was in eighth grade. Um, So I think they make exceptions when you're younger, Um, but I don't know. I don't think gap year would be eligible. Yeah. Um. All right. The next question we have here is, is there any online braving competition? Unfortunately, there isn't any online competition anymore. There was during COVID, but because COVID's over, mostly every uh, every region has chosen to do an in-person competition now. But again, it's up to the region. So you have to check with your region to see if there's anything online. But almost, I think almost for sure, there's no online competitions left. Yeah, I think everything has moved back in person uh, at this point. And, uh, what were, uh, Miles, what were the three finalist rounds that you had? Um, so they're the same rounds that you will have during the actual, um, during the national and international brain bee levels, which were uh, neuroanatomy and neurohistology round, uh, and then a neuro, uh, like a disease, a neurological disease diagnosis round. And then the final round, which was unique to my regional and then doesn't have to do with national, international, there is a Jeopardy round where like we uh, answer neuroscience questions in a Jeopardy format, if you know what that is. Um, there's a question from Jessica about how do we find the closest Brain B regional competition near us? So um, the first step I would do is go to your, your country's um, Brain B website. Um, maybe some countries don't have it, but a lot of them do. Um, and they might have like, uh, a database of a list of regional competitions near you. Um, for me, um, in the U.S., I didn't really, I couldn't really find anyone, um, anyone, anything in New York City. So I had to do like a little bit of digging. So I looked for places like close to me, or um, like outside of my state. So I found a couple in New Jersey and one in Connecticut. So you, you really just have to do a lot of googling. I don't think sometimes, sometimes there's no database available. So yeah. Yeah, honestly, the guys, the people who organize the Brain Bee don't really like do anything online. So there's not really a good website for the Brain Bee. Everything's kind of outdated. So yeah, you have to do your own digging to find the regional competition. Yeah. You have to form uh, a team or is it individual? Um, the Brain Bee is entirely individual. Um, so no, you do not form a team. Yeah, the team that Max and I were talking about was just uh, for a scavenger hunt. That was just a fun activity. It didn't have to do with the competition. Yeah. Um, there's this question, what kind of opportunities do we have if local competitions aren't held in our country? Um, so in that 
circumstance, I think if I were you and I had like the resources to, I would try to advocate to some local um, neuroscience organization um, to create a brain bee within your country or, or establish like a national brain bee within your country and hopefully expand it to more like grassroots or local um, places um, if, if you're interested in doing that and you're able to. Um, cause that, that's like one of the greatest things cause the international brain bee is always looking for more, um, countries to be a part of it. The whole point is to spread neuroscience to everywhere in the world. So I think if I were in your situation, I would try to find some local organization and ask them about it. Okay. Uh, now answering to answer Nia's question about, uh, if there's questions about brains that are not human brains on the national brain bee, there aren't actually. It, it focuses the brain bee at every level focuses only on the human brain. The reason that we show, show that there's a fly brain in our pictures was that it was a fly brain from a, from a, like a lab that we toured. So basically we were touring labs in order to see like how neuroscience worked in general, but it wasn't part of our test. So Actually, yeah, you just only to need add to, on to focus that. on the human brain. Hmm. Um, the, the focus is mainly on the human brain, but in brain facts, there is like a whole chapter on like using animal models uh, to understand the human brain. Um, so there's a little bit of that, but it is mainly like human brain. For example, if you were to do an anatomy section, you would just be looking at human brain parts. Um, oh, right. That did remind me. They did have a few questions on the natural brain bee that used a rat brain as a model or like another like animal brain, but they're always using it as a model for human brain. So you don't need to worry too much about that. You just need to worry about the human brain mainly. Yeah. Remember like the rainbow, what was it called on the? Yeah, the rainbow dente gyrus. Yeah. Yeah, the rainbow dente. That was, uh, I didn't know anything about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Do you have any previous knowledge on neuroscience before studying for the brain bee? Uh, personally, I did not. And I think the nice thing about the brain bee is that you can go into it without knowing anything about the brain. Um, the brain facts is, in my opinion, like really easy to understand and really easy to grasp that content. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you guys have different experience. For me, I had like, I had a lot of knowledge on psychiatry um, and like mental health disorders and stuff like that. And I did have a little bit of um, lab experience. So I understood a little bit of the stuff, but a lot of it, like, I didn't know any neuroanatomy. Like I didn't even know what a frontal lobe or a parietal lobe was when I was doing it. So I think it helped a little bit, but just it, it was just a smaller scope. And I think um, really anyone can learn um, learn the textbook and do well by studying the material, even if you don't have prior, prior knowledge. Actually, I will add, I think like having maybe like an honors bio, like knowledge could help, um, but you really don't need, need like prior experience. Yeah, and I'd say, I'm not sure about Max and Beta, but I know that I started studying really like a whole year ahead of time. And if you do that, or like you realize that you want to compete uh, pretty early, then it's really easy, even if you have no neuroscience background to uh, get everything like to start learning like gradually and consistently. I thought it was pretty easy. Are there any other questions? And like oh, right now, it, at this point, like there's still seven or eight months, maybe even more than that, eight or nine months until the next next year's brain bee. So if you guys start studying now for next year's brain bee, you'll have plenty of time to like understand yourselves. Yeah, I think most of them are held throughout like January, February, March, April-ish, towards, towards like the mm -hmm. beginning of the year, I think. Yeah, usually mine was in uh, like late February. Um, and the nationals is usually late April. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's around that time. But if you start studying now, like it should be plenty of time to be able to really prepare well. Um, so Nana asked how we got the opportunity to speak for Sinking Neuroscience. Um, so, so, uh, so this whole Neurothon event was um, hosted, by, uh, hosted by like the events department of Sinking Neuroscience. And I think Beta, you're involved in events planning as well. Um, are you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm currently the, the board president for SN um, and, and Miles is um, also a member of SN. Um, so that's sort of how we were able to 
um, host this panel? I actually only got involved because Max was like, hey, we wanted a speaker for uh, to talk about the brain bleed. So that's how I got involved, actually. Oh, uh, yeah. I think Veda reached out to me first about yeah. my brain bee panelists. And then I was like, oh, I wanted to bring bee this year. Let me like text a couple of my friends from there. And then Miles joined. And so, so, yeah. Um, is it possible for you to open the resource page then? Oh, yes. The and the links can... are still up in the chat. Hold on. I'll yeah, if you want us to resend them, let us know. But oh, there's there. Yeah, like feel free to take a screenshot or um, copy those links from the chat. Yeah. We'll stick around for a few more minutes um, to wait for any more questions that you have. Um, but that's like pretty much all for now. Thank you guys. Oh, um, if you guys ever uh, have any questions about like the brain bee after this and want to reach out to us personally, I can provide you with my um, Simply Neuroscience email account if you want to do that as well. Yeah, I can do the same. Um, always feel free to reach out if you yeah, always have any questions. I'm just going to drop it in the chat right now. If you have any questions about brain bee or in our experiences or like want any tips to start studying or see what we did to study, we'll be more than happy to answer you. Um, Miles, if you want to drop your email, if you want, I'm not sure. Or we could also just um, like pass on any questions to, to Miles. Yeah, Yeah, I don't have something anyway. in your science email. You guys should give me one. <laughs> I think there's a volunteer cohort that Shinmaya was working on. Data. It has that passed already or something? Uh, yeah, I think the deadline um, uh, oh, has passed. Next. Yeah. But yeah, if you do want to get involved with SN, um, definitely uh, check out our, our volunteer opportunities. Uh, we also continue to host events like this um, regularly, um, and we post uh, a lot of in informative content on our um, social media. So check that out as well. Uh, are there other opportunities or events similar to the Brain Bee that we know of? Um, I'm, what do you, if we're saying similar to the Brain Bee, like a competition thing, um, there's, there's not many like pure neuroscience based competitions besides the brain bee. I know there's like a couple events for high schoolers, like Simply Neuroscience hosted the Cognitive Creativity Challenge. Um, so that's something you can do if you're interested in like art or creative work to neuroscience competitions. Um, and I know the inter IYNA, uh, they have a couple events that go on throughout the year. Like they have an idea thon where you can pitch something, um, pitch some sort of like solution to an ongoing uh, neuroscience topic. And you you can form separate teams to like compete against other people for like the best idea or something like that. But I'm not sure if you guys know other events. Um, I do know some, but they're wider in scope, like you said. So like either medicine, like medicine or biology. So if you know like USA Biology Olympiad, there's also the US Medical uh, Medicine and Disease Olympiad and Science Olympiad. So those are all uh, things that I have done, and I think. Uh, if you're interested in brain bee, you might be interested in those, but the brain bee is the only premier, like the premier neuroscience competition that you can find for high schoolers. Exactly. And wait, do you guys know of any like neuroscience, like career forums, forums or like neuroscience fairs? Because that's also another like element. Uh, career, career fairs. Yeah. Or like maybe like neuroscience, I don't know, like neuroscience activity days. <laughs> I know there's like the Brain Awareness Week um, that's hosted by the Dana Foundation. I think 
um there's different there's different it's like an outreach event and that occurs in march every year um there may be one that's like local to you um i know there's also like the society for neuroscience has a conference every year that's that one's pretty big but i don't think it's open to high schoolers um it's really like undergraduate and above yeah for the dana foundation one i i, I hosted uh a brand awareness week in my local club at school so there, that's like an opportunity to like um show or you could even organize the event yourself to learn to help other teach other people about it but it's like uh brand awareness week is like really open sourced open to anyone that's willing to host some sort of event for them but yeah yeah but in terms of like a neuroscience competition the brand b is basically one of a kind um but if you do have like more general interest in bio, I'd recommend like the USA Biology Olympiad. Um, I think um, Miles mentioned that. Yeah. We we can stay on until six, and um, that's when the webinar technically ends. But. Um, are there any more questions? Yeah. Also, feel free to like unmute if you want. You don't have to send a new chat, but if you want to like talk with us unmuted, you can go ahead and do that as well if you're comfortable with it. How about we leave the room open till like 550 um, like the next like four to five minutes um, if you have any last minute questions. Uh, is there any online opportunities like competition or workshop for neuroscience in my country we don't have anything related to psychology or neuroscience. Um, simply neuroscience has a lot of. Um, like we have the um, we had an art competition recently um there is i know the i has like an idea thon um anything else you guys know of? and a lot of these are online so you can join from wherever you're located um i think like round here i'm not sure if you guys have heard of it um i think they have people like create presentations for a competition and stuff but uh the uh round peer like round peer I, I think there's some sort of organization that works for that that's completely online yeah, yeah unfortunately none of since we all live in the us we don't really have ideas about what kind of opportunities out there in the world but i'd say like max was early, saying earlier about like starting your own like local branch of the brain beat you can always take initiative and see if you can organize stuff with the existing institutions in your country and yeah that 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 would be like something really cool I I would like to do too. Do we have ideas for our future careers? We are we are high school age, but I don't know. Some of us are very ambitious. Do you guys have any plans that you want to talk about? Go back to the about a slide. I'd say that gives you a little idea. I think we can say that we all want to go into neuroscience in some way, shape, or form. Um, exactly. I personally want to go to medical school, possibly in the future, um, but I'm still in high school, so I don't know yet. Um, I'm interested in like maybe becoming a psychiatrist um, or potentially going to more behavioral sciences, um, like in economics or something like that. I'm also interested in the intersection between psychiatry and law so seeing how to how to be um, like a forensic psychiatrist or to understand criminology um, through a neuroscience or psychiatric lens would be something that would be interesting and thank you guys oh you must have loved that ethics of the brain chapter oh that was that one was so fun <laughs> yeah your economics was really interesting because 
um, if you have to work on something like Wall Street, but you could also um, employ research in neuroscience to understand financial trends and stuff like that. Me personally, I have like my parents work in economics and finance and stuff like that. I never really took a huge interest in that, but I feel like neuroscience can be very um, useful for it. Um, do we use LinkedIn? We have LinkedIn accounts. Um, I'm not sure if you guys want to drop yours in, but I can I can definitely drop my <laughs> LinkedIn. Um, I'll pull it up. Yeah, I have a LinkedIn too. If you want to. Yeah. Oh, sure. It I'll drop in my chat right now. Sounds awesome. Uh, what opportunities from Jessica are available for high school students to work or further get involved with simply neuroscience? So um, we have, I'm not sure if you're a volunteer right now quite yet, but um, if you, if you, Shin Mai, our founder, uh, works very closely with all of us, um, including the director leads and, and our volunteers. Uh, she was actually just here earlier in the meeting to start us off, but uh, if you, if you become a volunteer with us, I know the deadline recently just passed, but we're going to reopen, uh, volunteer applications pretty soon. Um, Beta, you're board president, you know, everything, I think. So, if you want to ask. Yes. Um, so I can actually pull up the link to our website. Um, the, so I misspoke earlier, the, the form is actually, it's due on August 5th. Um, so it's coming up pretty soon. Um, we we have a, a like a cohort application system. Um, so you would have to apply before August 5th. Um, and we have a lot of different departments, a lot of ways to get involved. Um, like Miles, if you want to talk about your work at SN or Max, sorry. Um. So I'm actually the director of the Ashram Essential Advising Program. Uh, our our uh, deadline period just passed, but we're going to reopen it sometime in like August or September. Uh, and that's basically uh, a specific program that uh, Simply Neuroscience runs uh, that matches like high school aged or college undergrad students to uh, mentors in neuroscience and psychology. Uh, so that's like if you end up uh, joining your uh, simply neuroscience as a volunteer and you want to work with me or something like that um you can apply to the Ashram potential advising program oh yeah jessica you are in the apath i think i think i saw your name in there um we're we're just like uh trying to downsize everything so we'll we're trying to lower the amount of different regions or branches of sn that people can work in because we want people to stay more committed to a certain initiative um, in the future, we might reopen it to like more than just one initiative, but for now, um, volunteering is just um, being um, just like only sticking into one group. But we're happy to hear that you're um, in APAP. I, I thought your name sounded familiar because um, for, for an update for it, we're going to send out more matching emails later this week. So you'll get your match sooner or later. Um, let's see. Sarah's question, can we speak on how neuroscience can intersect with other fields of study? Um, you guys have any interest in neuroscience intersections? I do have interest in neuroscience intersections, but I'd say they're very conventional compared to yours. It's just how neuroscience intersects with other like areas of medicine and STEM. So I'd say you're probably the best one to speak on that, Max. <laughs> I know the Brain Facts book mentioned neuroscience uh, intersections with other uh, branches of uh, like fields. So I know neuroscience and law of uh, forensic psychology or psychiatry is really, really cool. You get to, um, a lot of the basis basics of law is like ethics and neuroscience is a really good, um, is a really good method to explain certain things. Like you could say, what is, is this thing a criminal's fault because of their brain or was it because of something that they can control? 
or can you can you do brain imaging scans to see if um something some brain trauma could be attributed could could the thing that they did be attributed to the brain trauma or is it something that they themselves had voluntary choice over and were able to control so that's like the intersection between neuroscience and law or psychiatry and ethics um i'd say or, there's probably an intersection between neuroscience and every other field simply because we're all humans and we all have brains so neuroscience is you so can cool. just need to try hard enough to find one it's just applicable to everything because our yeah. brains is like used for everything in in life like you can intersect it with art it, it's just like it encapsulates everything in the world and like what us as humans do which is why i think it's so cool in general um there's an intersection between neuroscience and economics so you could use neuroscience or neural networks or AI to uh, examine, um, look at trends uh, or the behavior of economics, whether um, the economy is going to rise or fall or what certain things can lead to that. And you can intersect it with computers, neuroscience and computer science for computational neuro neurology, which is like you could look at AI systems and things like that. So. So there's a question about um, how can I apply for APAP? Um, if you want to join the APAP team, um, applications are open right now. Um, if you want to apply as a mentor or mentee, I think Max, you can probably speak more on that. Yeah, so if you want to be a part of the APAP team, like working behind the scenes with us, um, you can apply you select APAP as like your top like team to work with when you're applying as a volunteer. That's um, due on August 5th. If you want to be a part of the mentorship program and join as an advisee or advisor, um, we actually just passed our, our deadlines, like passed, and we're already beginning to match people now. But we, um, we still have uh, a couple of advisors that don't have any advisees right now. And we're looking for like a couple of people who can join us and be a part of that and join with those advisees who are advisors who are still unmatched. So if you're an advisee, if you're a high school student or um, an undergrad student, you can like send me an email. Um, I'll drop the emails you can send to in the chat to like ask about if there's any other opportunities to join us, but yeah. Um, so there's advising program at superhumanoscience.org. That's a team email and then mine is Um, but yeah, uh, you can find more information on our website. It's just uh, mentorship opportunities for uh, expanding uh, field opportunities and um, bridging the gap for education and neuroscience. So, thank you. Any last minute questions before we end at six? All right, well, I think we can. Oh. Yeah, I can um, speak about the awareness. Um, so basically, the goal of the department is to, sorry, give me one minute. Um, okay, sorry. So basically, we, we, we're we involved with um, various initiatives to uh, raise awareness of uh, neurological disorders or um, mental health awareness is also a big part of the department. Um, so like one of the past initiatives was Wellness Week, um, where basically students can um, work with their schools to uh, encourage um, uh, encourage like mental health activities. Um, and the awareness department has also been involved with, um, a part of our podcast, which, um, brings attention to disorders like Down syndrome and autism. Um, so there's a lot of, 
um, different initiatives that are involved there, but um, I really encourage you to apply if you're interested um, again by August 5th. Great. Well, I think that's all the questions we got. So thank you all so much for um, uh, attending the panel today. It was really great to speak with you all. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can feel free to reach out to us over email. Um, we'd be happy to help. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for making it today. Thank you, guys. Okay, I think I will just end the meeting. Uh, all right, do you know bye. if this is gonna be uploaded? Oh, sorry. Oh, do you know if this is gonna be uploaded uh, to YouTube or something? Because we're recording it. Yeah, I think you it can will. stop the you can stop the recording now. Oh, yeah, we can stop recording now.